All right, guys. <clears throat> I'm Andy. I'm your data structures teaching assistant. Um, I'm going to do this video in English since it's my native language and it's easier for me to communicate. All right. Um, if you have any questions about this video, you can feel free to email me. Okay, so let's get started. So the first thing we want to do is we want to create a new repository. Okay. So let's make a new repository, a new folder. We're going to call this test repo. Okay. Now we're going to go into this and the very first command that we're going to do will be get in it. Okay. Now, basically this initializes a new repository. So after we've initialized our repository, we're going to add a readme file. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and say, uh, not get, we're going to say echo. I'm going to write my name, my code, and my semester. Okay. We're going to send this to our readme file txt and to verify its content. There it is. All right. Okay. So the first thing that we need to know is, um, once we create the folder, you know, we've created this here, we've got our folder there. It's on master. So we're going to go ahead and yeah, we're going to go open Firefox here and let's go to github.com. Okay. Now, once we're on GitHub, we're going to create a new repository and we're going to name this test repo. It's going to be, um, educational repository. Okay. Let's set this to private and create repository. All right. So here we've got a, a, a setup. We can do it in HTTPS or in secure shell, which is how I prefer to use the SSH. So basically I'm going to copy this and let's check this out. If we write git status, we can see that we added this file but we haven't added it to the actual repository. So I'm going to say git add readme.txt. Okay. Once I show git status again, it's going to be ready to be committed. Now, what we're going to do first, however, is I'm going to commit this file, right? We're going to say git minus M first commit and it's committed. Now we're going to add the remote. Now you don't really need to know too much about this, except that remote is just, you know, a remote repository and origin is kind of like the default name to the remote repository on GitHub, which corresponds to the local repository. Okay. So after that, what we're going to do is we're just going to go ready to push. Now, the first time that we push to a repository, we're going to have minus U and we're going to write origin master. Okay. Now this is going to push the code to the website. Now you don't need to really understand how this works. The only thing is master is the default name of the initial branch. And like I said earlier, origin is the default name of the remote repo. So when you push origin master, you're basically pushing uh, to a branch on the remote repository. Now, one thing is that minus U basically just is the same thing as, uh, this code right here. You know, it's just a little shortcut. You don't really need to know about all that. So, okay. Now, uh, now that we did the push, remember that push sends everything to the repository. So let's refresh this page and there it is. There's our readme. We're on the branch, which is the master branch. And we can also see the commit, which says first commit. All right. And here's the hash code. So when we open this, we can see what was added and what was deleted. Okay. So that was pretty easy. Now let's go ahead and create a project in our IDE. Now I prefer use to use this one called IntelliJ. You guys may have different preferences. Okay. So I'm going to create this. Let's say it's test repo, new project. 
All right, and here we can see our readme. There it is. And we can see that I am on the master branch and there's no more branches. So we'll, we'll take a look at that in a minute. Let's go ahead and create a new, a new Java class. Let's call this test. Okay. Now you've seen this before a million times. So let's go ahead and write the class here. All right, let's declare a variable or an attribute rather. I'll say private, sorry, private string name and private int age. Okay, now let's write the constructor. So we can say public test string name int age. And I can say this dot name equals name, this dot age equals age. Okay, very well. So what we're gonna ha what's gonna happen is we're gonna come here, let's close this thing. We're gonna go to get status and it says there's untracked files. Okay, so we have to add these files. So we're gonna say git add src test. And once again, if we say get status, we'll say it's up to date and we have changes that need to be committed. So let's go ahead and add these changes. Okay, git commit minus m. And again, this minus m flag lets us write a message here. If we don't, if we don't use minus m, it's going to open up, it's going to open up uh, vim, which it's kind of difficult to use. So we're going to do this and we'll say add a test class. There we go. Now, after we could do the very first commit or the very first push rather, which is this right here, after the first push on any branch, we can just say git push to see it update on GitHub itself. So we've done that. Now let's go ahead to the website. We can say here, let's click on code and I'll refresh it. There we go. Now, if I click here, we see the test class, right? That's exactly what we wanted. We can even go back and we can see the commits and there's two commits. First commit and add a test class. Everything is fine. Now, what happens is Let's say we want to add something to this code without breaking it. Okay, that's probably a big issue that we were having. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to create a branch. Okay, now a branch is just a snapshot. It's like a copy or a clone of the current repository and it clones it to another one that we can modify without damaging the first repository. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and create one. The way we create a branch is the fastest way is we can say git checkout minus b branch one. So we're on branch one. Now the minus b, that's just making it our lives easier. We can also just say git branch branch one, and then we can say git checkout branch one. So this instruction creates the branch. This instruction sets our current branch to that branch. But if we say git checkout minus b branch, it does everything in one instruction, which is what we want. Now, if we open our IDE here, now we see branch one, we can go back to master, and it's going to be the same exact code. If you go back to branch one, it's the same code, right? So let's go ahead and modify the code in branch one. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to create uh, getters and setters. Okay. So I'm going to highlight these and I'm just going to say generate getter and setter for both of these. And there we go. Okay. Now let's go ahead and put these down here. And there we go. So if we go back here and we say again, get status it's going to say, you know, we've modified this file. So let's go ahead and add the file to the repo. Now, another shortcut that you can do is you can say git add period. This adds every single file that had, has been modified. Okay. And if we go ahead and here's your git status, it says it's ready. So let's write a commit message. Let's call this the commit on the new branch. Now we can go ahead and push that code. Now, here's something interesting. 
We see that it asks us to do this again. That's because every time we're in a new branch, GitHub wants us to set the upstream, which again, we can just say git push minus u origin. But this time we're not pushing to the master branch. We're pushing to branch one. All right. So we've got that set up. Now let's go back to our code and we can refresh this. And we'll see it's the same class, right? But if we come up here to our code, let's open this document up here. Here we see master and here we see branch one, which has our differences. Now we can also come here as well and switch to the master branch and switch to our new branch, right? Now, let's say we want to, once again, modify something in this branch. It's possible to create a new branch from branch one. Let's call this branch two, okay? I'm going to go ahead again. And I'm going to say git checkout minus b branch two, okay? So now I switch to the new branch, right? If I do this, we'll see that everything is fine. Everything's perfect. So let's add another file. Okay. So again, I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to say, um, adding new file, and we're going to add this to test file.txt. All right. Now, if I come here, I'll see that this is the file adding a new file, right? But if I switch back to my branch one, that file is still here, but that's because we're in this entire repository, right? If I come here now, and if I say check out branch one, and I say ls, um, we're gonna see that file here still because we didn't do a commit, okay? So what we're gonna go ahead and do is the following. We're gonna say git check out branch two, and we're going to add everything and we're going to do a commit, add a new file. Okay. Now this is on branch two, right? If I check out branch one, we don't see that file. So we see it's very important that when you switch from branch to branch, you have to make sure you commit before switching to the branch or else the changes are going to be reflected across all branches, right? So there we go. We're on branch one and the file is gone. We see. So let's go ahead and switch back to branch two. There we go. We're on branch two and my file is back again. Okay. Now let's modify test. Okay. Let's try doing something different. Let's say, for example, we can say, um, public void, let's just say, um, increment age. Okay. That's very simple. We're just going to say age plus plus. Now I'm going to comment this here and say, this is going to be a new method. Okay. And if we go back to get status, sorry, get status, we'll see that it's not modified. So I'm going to go ahead and add everything. Okay. And okay, so this is actually something I'll get to in another video. These are just aliases to make everything easier. All right. So we've already done that. I'm going to do get the skip push. We can actually copy and paste that. And I'm going to push to branch two. So let's go back to to get and I'm going to come here and say, go to branch two. And we'll see that we have the, uh, wait, hold on one second. There's a, seems something that's not quite right here. Ah, uh, yes, I have to do a commit message. Sorry about that. Let's write it out. Commit mp2. We're going to push the code. There we go. Now that should update with what we were trying to accomplish. So let's go back. 
And there it is. You see, we're in branch two, and we've got this new method. If I switch to branch one, it's gone. And if I switch to the master, right, we see that it's just this. So let's say that the, com the commit that we made in branch two, we want to update it to branch one. This is how we do that. We're going to say git checkout branch one, and we're going to use the following command, git merge branch two. Now it says here, two files were changed. There were six insertions and we created this new file. So if we come back, if we come back here, right? We notice that branch one and branch two are the same, right? That's basically what merge does. It merges the changes that you made in another branch with its parent branch. And last, we can go ahead and say, if we're happy with our results, we can check out the master and we can say, git merge branch one. We have all these insertions and we're on master. So if we check out our code here on master branch, we'll notice that it hasn't changed, right? So let's go back to here. If we say git status, we see something different. It says it's ahead by three commits because of the commits that we've made. So we can just say git push There we go, perfect. And we can see our master branch has been updated with the new changes, all right? So that's basically all you need to know about Git branch and basically how to work with GitHub. In the next video, I'll show you guys how to create aliases and I'll do another video on generics, all right? So have a good one, guys.